Brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to one and all of you and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I, I firmly believe that God is faithful and I keep telling this in almost every other session. Uh, he's not someone who is going to forget us. Just have that confidence in God. Uh, delay is not denial. There are certain aspects in your life where things are not yet fixed and uh, you are living in pain, you are living in some sort of sickness and you are maybe having some troubles with your neighbor at workplace, your boss is still kind of very harsh at you, harassing you maybe. I do not know which category you may fall, um, but I know one thing for sure that uh, my God, the God, the Father, the loving Father, your Father and my Father, He's not someone who is going to forget you. And uh, that is a day that's going to come shortly where you will see that God wipes your tears and all your um, yeah, all your troubles are going to come to an end. Revelation 21 you will see there. right? And um, that's not something that is applicable only after white throne judgment. Even while you live your lives on earth. Yeah, how many of you trust this that a God is not someone who will be closing his eyes and waiting. Oh, okay, let me wait for the white throne judgment and uh, take it from there. Sorry. <laughs> that that will be the biggest lie of the devil. And I don't believe. Because that is something um, that's going to take place as a, as a uh, representation for this new heaven and earth. And uh, the new heaven and earth is going to come down. Agreed. But while we live here on earth, who you think created this earth? It says the Father, right? And if there are certain things that is applicable to this new heaven and earth, yeah, obviously it's going to be applicable on earth. That's why I'm a great believer of seeing heaven on earth, even before the white throne judgment, even before the second coming, even before the rapture, even before the thousand years rule, battle of Armageddon, you know the sequence. I messed up the sequence a bit, but forgive me for that. Right? Well, <laughs> there is another debate going on. Rapture comes first and then the, uh, you know, the second coming. Um, Many people call rapture a second coming itself. So I don't want to get in there. Rapture, battle of Armageddon, and thousand year reign, white throne judgment. All this happens in a certain sequence as it is prescribed in the Bible. Perhaps you could read the book of Revelation for yourself and you can find out. But yeah, you can see heaven on earth even before these incidents takes place. Heaven at home, your home will become like heaven. Yes, your workplace will turn to be like paradise. Because why? You are the person who is going to make it happen. You bring the change. You, wherever you go, there is changes. There are changes that you will bring into that atmosphere, bring into that company where you work, bring into your family. Yeah, your the life of your wife and children, they, it changes, right? But it doesn't happen on the spot. It doesn't happen instantaneously sometimes and that's where uh, most of the Christians they lose that patience they lose that hope and confidence why because it's not happening brother I've been praying for two three years if it does not happen then what is the use two three years it does not happen so what the life is not yet over your wife is still not dead and gone your children are just young huh can you believe the confidence and the faith and the patience that Jesus had on his father 30 years he was ready to wait for his ministry and obviously Jesus knew he was growing in spirit um, even at the age of 12 he had the spirit of God in him can you imagine he's standing in the midst of the Pharisees and Sadducees and all these folks um, and then he was explaining the gospel three days and three nights yeah that, that that's that's what you see in Jesus right and after that again 18 years he had to work for his family, his responsibilities, Father Joseph is dead and so many other things came on him. But he continues to look up to God in patience. Right? Don't you have such a patience lingering to your heart? Do not give up on your prayer. 
Like things are going to change and you will be that person who bring that change. You will make that heaven on earth. Right? You wherever you you go, people see the presence of God flowing in and through you. Yeah, I I heard many people witnessing. Uh, you know, to some people when I talk, they they feel so light in their heart and they. And I'm not a great entertainer of phone calls, but yeah, few selective calls I do attend. And uh, I, at workplace before COVID, I used to go and a lot of people, you know, come to me. And they ask advice and counsel and this and that. So I tell them, believers, unbelievers, doesn't matter. And in fact, I my, the doors of my ministry was not even open at that time. But but I was a strong believer in the Bible in the name of Jesus. And whatever advice we we give, I'm with the Holy Spirit consulting Him. They feel light. They feel good, and it works. And we bring that change, right? You yourself. your body mind soul and spirit along with your holy spirit you bring that change you will be the change and father of indian nation right be the change who you want to be right the change begins through you and from you and that's called as leadership right any leader will never wait for let him react let him take that initiative let me think about it ah uh, who is going to go first he will never ask such funny questions he will be always on top of his toes and Uh, such a person is called as leader and the bible talks about you know leaders jesus was leader when he built these 12 folks as leaders who 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 changed the world who turned the world upside down who you want to be my beloved brother my sister that it reminds the mark of your life and exactly we are discussing from second corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 to 3 we already finished and warm welcome to the series genealogy and evolution of a christian or a christianity Uh, Christianity, you can define as congregation, denomination, religion, doctrine, theology, whatever it want. You you, de- you define your own title, but the thing is, like, do the right thing, as it has been preached and taught to us by our Lord Jesus. You go by the principles that are enrolled as guidelines, and technically they are called as laws and commandments in the Bible, New Covenant, Old Covenant. Both of them are needed, equally important, right? And no one can say that ah, new covenant Jesus introduced. Therefore, old covenant abolished. If that was the case, Bible would have only twenty-seven books. Jesus himself did not abolish it. Who are you to abolish? Matthew five seventeen. He said, "I never abolish. I did not come to abolish the old covenant. No, I came to fulfill none of the laws and commandments of Moses. I came to abolish because there was another argument going on. This guy is talking something new, and how dare he insults Moses and Father Abraham and all that." Uh, if you take and read john 8 you know that big argument goes on between the people of israel and his, uh, jesus finally they did not accept they were about to stone him to death that's a different story oh w- what else did they accept <laughs> they rejected jesus and crucified him so forget it my point here is be the change who you want to be be the change wherever you bring wherever you go bring that change and may the change happen through you and that the change is for the benefit of the people the welfare of the people the benefit of you and yourself right and i'm not saying the change can happen on day one no sometimes it takes even decades some of the changes in my own life personal life in my own attitude oh it took couple of decades you won't believe it you have to be precise two and of decades since the time i was a born again a believer or disciple in christ i had to battle out one or two issues and i would say Yeah, fifty percent I was wrong, and fifty percent the wiles of the devil. I didn't know how to tackle it and fight against it. Spiritual warfare. I didn't know how to handle in those one or two areas. And the Holy Spirit worked with me, and I worked with him, and we we partnered. It it takes time on certain areas, and don't again keep uh, you know uh, rolling your eyes and you know say that well if Holy Spirit is working with you, should it take two and a half decades, brother and sister? Stop questioning like this. If it takes, it takes. but fight it out consistently without giving up be a warrior in christ with the spiritual weapons gospel of truth breastplate of righteousness helmet of salvation ah huh? sword of the spirit and gospel of peace and all that right belt of truth and breastplate of righteousness so one more thing is i always keep forgetting six weapons given to you i preached about that in the body mind spirit and soul series spiritual composition how to fight against the wiles of the devil if you practice or if you get into all these principles abide in these laws and commandments don't you think so where you ever wherever you go you will be the change 
you will bring changes to the situation and you will make that place like heaven ah oh, the presence of god flows through you heaven is seen through you beautiful song right heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross my jesus made me whole my sins are washed away and my night was turned to day oh what a wonderful wonderful day the day i will never forget after i wandered in darkness away oh jesus my savior i met oh what a tender compassionate friend he met the needs of my heart shadows dispelling with joy i am telling he made all my darkness depart Ah, heaven came down and glory filled my soul when at the cross my Jesus made me whole. Wonderful song, isn't it? That will be the song that everyone will sing and merry, sing and sing merrily in their hearts when you enter. I've seen that in many people's life. Um, when when one brother enters into a big auditorium with full of commotions, confusions, and all that, like how Paul the apostle makes the difference when he plants the church in Ephesus and Philippi. One man planting church in Corinth, Ephesus, Philippi, Galatia, and so many cities. Wow! In Beroea, where he doesn't have to write letters because they were all very shrewd people. Can you believe one man of God bringing the change? He brought heaven on earth. Where are those Pauls today? Huh? Where are those Peters? Where are those John disciples who could receive this revelation, book of revelation? All liars, false prophets. There wasn't a single person to, you know, truly alert the mankind. Huh? Before COVID could come, everyone said, oh, 2020, you know, blessed year and all that. False prophets. Shame on them. Liars. Okay, fine. COVID came. Tell me how many of the churches were open asking people to come in the name of Jesus, you shall be healed and not a single church. All of them went underground. False prophets, they probably, you know, built a bunker and they were hiding right under the ground. Shame on this. Cowards, spiritual cowards. Somebody is asking me, brother, what were you doing? I never spoke anything about prophecies. Yeah, my calling is to preach and teach the word of God and I stick to it. Did I ever say that, please come and line up, let me stretch my hand, lay, on, lay it on your head and then uh, talk a word of prophecy and all that. That's between you and God. You don't need a prophet technically. You are that prophet and you are that prophetess. You have access to the promises of God. You have access to the throne room of God in the name of Jesus. Your knee shall bow, your tongue shall confess and the Father God is ready to reveal the secrets of heaven. He is ready to unlock. What were you doing? I would ask the same question to you. Right? Did I ever say that I was a miracle worker? No. In fact, after every message, I keep telling. If there is any prayer request, do not come to me. Go to Father. And that's the reason we are teaching these principles. How you could stand independently, confidently, boldly, strongly, firmly, grounded and rooted in the word of God and talk to the Father in the name of Jesus as how my Jesus spoke to his Father. And he is my Father and your Father and Jesus' Father too. Because we are younger brothers to Jesus. He's our elder brother. Yeah, And what were you doing about your co-workers and neighbors all inflicted? You are the believer in Christ, aren't you? Did you pray over them and kick this corona, this COVID out of their bodies and save lives while people were dying? What were these false prophets and prophetess doing? Nothing. Bunkers. Again, don't mistake, right? I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you should unsubscribe from such churches, stop going to churches and all that. No, sorry. That's between you and Holy Spirit. I'm a, I'm a firm believer on fellowship. You, you, you got to go to church. Yeah, but don't try anything crazy during this COVID times. All that I'm saying is I'm not against gathering. I'm not against the church. I'm not against the, uh, the fellowship with God because the church has multiple meanings to it. Your own body is the temple of God church. Your family is another church. You go to Church, a building, right? Where people, families gather together. You're a member of certain congregation. Yes, that's church. All three are needed. All three are important. Balanced life. Yeah. If that was not the case, then God wouldn't have allowed Paul to plant so many churches and 
I don't think Jesus would waste his time writing seven letters to seven churches. Alarming. So forget it. I'm not getting there. Sorry. Um, sorry, I got a little spiked up with my emotions when I think of these false prophets and false prophetess. But uh, never ever look for prophets and prophetess. You are that prophet, my brother. You are that prophetess, my dear sister. Kneel down on the presence of God, in the presence of God and raise your hands to the sky and ask, heaven come down, heaven come down, Father come down, my, my Holy Spirit, please fill this place and I will tell you what, whatever you confess in the name of Jesus, when you pray, believe that you have received, Matthew 21, 22, one of my favorite verses, maybe I will read that and I will step into the session, I don't know, somehow today I am overwhelmed to preach on a different subject, right? And all these things, so whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Believe is the key here. When you believe in the promises of God, waiting in patience, waiting for his intervention, ha, you will feel it. You will receive it. Not just feeling. It's just not a superficial emotion. No, it's reality. You will see situations changing. You will see your body reacting to the word of God and sickness is staying away from your body and your family. Sometimes you have to fast and pray. How many of you are with me? Huh? When we get into such fiery messages, people get thrilled. Oh, the, the preaching was vibrant, brother. Oh, please continue to talk. This is actually called as preaching. You know, teachers can preach easily, but preachers cannot teach easily. <laughs> so Bible, my God, the Father called me as a teacher. That's the gift he gave me. And I'm thankful to him for his grace and mercy. 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Yeah. And, and teachers can preach. It's not a big deal. But preachers cannot teach. Why? Because they only know to give this pep talks, motivational uh, messages, and uh, you know, take the old, all the favorite uh, parables and have favorite stories and they convert it to some sort of um, you know, vibrant messages and make people to jump, clap hard and whistle and all that. Please don't whistle in the church. There can't be a better means of insulting the Holy Spirit. Whistling. You know, people do the whistling on the theater and the rock shows and pop musics. Have some discipline, right? Have some reverence and respect for your Lord. All right. Forget it. Who am I to? Then somebody will question me. Tell me what has been written in Bible about whistling. Everything don't take Bible. You have some brains in your head. Common sense. What the worldly people do on the entertainment shows, you cannot do the same. In the presence of God, that's it. Don't argue anything more than that. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Today, I don't know, I'm in the preaching mode. <laughs> Hope you're all enjoying. All right, so we are talking through this marks of the ministry and ministry equal to the deeds of your life. Yeah, the manifestations of your words that proceeds from your mouth. The doings with all the organs, sensory organs, like your ears, mouth, and um, eyes, what do you see? And hands, what do you do? Legs, where it transports you. Huh? Morning spending time in the pub and evening attending a charismatic prayer. Huh? Are you that fair, not fair-weathered Christian, but a hypocritic uh, Christian? Or are you a fair-weathered Christian? Fair-weathered Christian means all well. Praise God, hallelujah. And nothing is well. God is blind, you know. He, he did not even listen to my prayer. Immediately condemning. Immediately throwing tantrums and heresies against God. Fair weather. Is, are these the marks of your life? Uh, is this your lifestyle? Are these your manifestations? Are you that impatient brother and uh, intolerant sister? No, no. Being intolerant and... Uh, Impatient <clears throat> with the world, I understand because <clears throat> every single day is a challenge to battle with the world, wiles of the devil, spiritual attacks, <clears throat> principalities and powers of darkness is waging war against us. The the devil and the evil spirits, the demons are like um, you know the devouring lion moving back and forth across the ends of the earth. Not easy <clears throat> for any believer in Christ. Sorry for my throat. Believer in Christ. Right? I understand. But then you are not going to give up. You are an overcomer. You are a warrior. Great reason within you than that is in this world. 1 John 4 4. And what kind of manifestations and the deeds of your love, sorry, of your life proceeds if you are a believer in these principles? That that's a difference you make. 
between a heathen who also goes through these kind of situations in the world versus you also go through the same situation in the world both of you live on earth don't you and uh, but you make a difference the way how you handle in style is different yeah this is what we are talking through and uh, it's tightly coupled to the law of forgiveness you don't fall into these principles if the deeds of your life are not confined within these boundaries then um then what you don't receive forgiveness from god because why it's a sin big crime and you don't even accept it's a sin then fine continue the way who you are and the white throne judgment you will understand the truth right and at the same time the other other side of it is you will not have the uh, character of christ christ like mindset in you you will neither be able to forgive others you will neither be able to kind to be kind and compassionate and loving and patient with one another you will not be able to fulfill the other commandments love one another right and um, love your neighbor as yourself and uh, even love the lord god your uh, god uh, love the lord your god with all your heart mind and soul matthew 22 37 39 matthew 5 43 to 48 all these principles all these foundational principles that jesus taught you will never be able to fulfill if you are not falling in line uh, with these teachings how many of you are with me and that's why we are spending a lot of time in this marks of the ministry meaning marks of your life manifestations of your life and we spoke from the concept of grace second corinthians 6:1 that receive the grace of god in vain and we spoke from 6 corinthians second corinthians 6:2 uh, that you who don't have patience in an acceptable time i've heard you and in the day of salvation i have helped you and we spoke from verse number 3 in the last session we give no offense we spoke a lot about offense and sorry i took a little longer to get into the session today verse number 4 but in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of god now this commending attitude is uh, shouldn't be linked with the flattering lips right so people encourage one another which is nice but then you, you don't encourage if one another with the lying lips or flattering lips that's very dangerous and that's devil's attitude you got to speak the truth but there is a mannerism to speak the truth the best example would be in funeral ceremony you can see once the person is dead and gone whoever comes oh he's a scholar he's a brilliant he's a uh, intellectual he's this he's that he's good and while the guy was living they would be calling him as he's a, one of the biggest dirtiest pig i have ever known right all sorts of lies you can see being spoken in that funeral ceremony while the dead body is lying anyway i don't attend funerals for two reasons one is i i won't be able to digest the agony what the family goes through uh, it's so so agony so uh, it's so terrible for me to hear that uh, you know crying and uh, the family in anguish deep anguish I I I feel heartbroken and it takes me weeks to battle I won't be normal yeah, that that cry of that family will continue to linger in the bottom of my heart I keep hearing that maybe I have a psychological problem maybe yeah but I get deeply attached to that family whoever it may be unbelievers believers I refrain from attending and secondly all sorts of lies will be spoken there <laughs> and i just cannot take this in especially when i know the brother or sister who is dead and gone i definitely know what kind of life they lived and these 20 people will be applauding them and praising them so this is not like appreciating one another this you know uh, flattering lips and giving that credit through that flattering lips means nothing to god and you better refrain but otherwise you need to have that appreciating attitude right appreciating attitude requires lot of patience yeah lot of um, humility and uh, zero pride huh? zero envy zero bitterness bitter envy you can find this word in second sorry james chapter 3 verses 11 to 15 it's talking about heavenly wisdom and demonic wisdom if you are a person with demonic wisdom you will have all these things list of things strife grudge envy lovers of yourself selfish attitude uh, grumbling attitude gossiping sledging slandering all these things will be there second corinthians 3 1 to 9 colossians 3 5 to 9 1 corinthians 6 9 and 10 1 timothy 1 9 and 
Mark 7, 21 to 23, Galatians 5, 17 to 21, Romans 1, 29 to 32, Romans 6, 13 to 20, Ephesians 4, 31. List of things are being described as character that you should quit, right? That you should quit. And if that is not enough, I discovered something else. In 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter uh, 6 and uh, verse number uh, 17, uh, yeah, verse number 17, something like that, you know, you, you can read that. All these are varieties of sinful deeds that uh, the Christians don't even take a note. Because why? They First of all, they have ignored. Secondly, even if they were, did, were to discover, they say, how it is possible to live so pure, brother, in this world full of evil spirits moving around and all that. And that's why you are called as a Christian. That's the mark of your life. That's the mark. Of a Christian beloved, that's exactly what we are discussing here. You are that role model. And anyway, the topic here is, do you appreciate others, believers, unbelievers? At workplace, somebody gets promoted who is much, much junior to you. And uh, maybe you end up reporting to a junior <laughs> who is your boss. What is your attitude? God permits. That's it. That's it. Two words will bring that resolution. I will tell you what, that's the most toughest thing to accept. Toughest thing to accept in life is God permits, brother. So fine, you will be able to see that out. You will able to say that outwardly, inwardly it will be full of at least full of sadness, if not grudge, or if you are not uh, that evil person or wicked brother uh, who's having that strife or a revenging, avenging attitude, offensive attitude. At least you will have this sadness, which is okay, normal. Don't worry. You are sad in your heart. Fine. God sees that sadness. Being sad before God. Yeah, it's different from grumbling before God, grumbling or murmuring or gossiping, grumbling and murmuring, both of them before God is quite a thing, right? You are sad before God. Yes, God, I'm sad and be open to him, right? Do not hide. I'm really sad. I'm trying to overcome. Maybe you will sob for a few days, but overcome, overcome, right? And that's the mark of a Christian. But then at the same time, you will be also able to accept that person who got promoted at your workplace, uh, that he, is, he being your junior, you will love him. As your own brother, yeah, you will wish success for him. You will work so loyally. Uh, I mean, so loyal. You will be so loyal to him. You will be so sincere to him. Although, uh, you know, you won't crib in your heart saying that, you know, he's, he's my junior. Once upon a time, he was reporting to him. What? Now he is boss. Why should I work for him? You won't, you won't speak like that. That's demon's voice. That's demonic wisdom. No, you will work with all sincerity. You, wo you won't mind to call him sir, sir. And you know what? That fellow will feel so, so shy. Don't call me sir, my brother. You were my boss at some point of time. Yeah. And I still respect that. And don't call me sir. You will find, you know, it, it, it melts people's heart. When you are humbled, bro, you know, it really melts it, melts it, melts them down. It's like heaping coals of fire on their head. Bible says that. Yeah, but that's one aspect. But in much patience. In the midst of tribulation, I'm reading from verse number four, right? We being ministers of God in much patience, in tribulation. Sometimes you have harassing boss. God permits. Again, that's the mantra. Hmm? That's a formula. God permits tribulation sometimes. Maybe most of the times. In some people's life I've seen, I wonder, you know, they are not preachers, teachers, miracle workers, but I look at their life. Oh my goodness, they are more than any of these guys. Miracle workers and preachers. So much of trouble in their life. So much of problems in their family, sick wives, a sick husband, sick mother, and uh, mischievous children. Yet this brother, no, he will remain undefiled. Wow. I have a tremendous respect for such brothers and sisters in Christ. And I know them. Many of them I know. And you know what? Not one, uh, not for one, for, not for a year or two, but almost like decades together. And even to this day, they, they battle it out. I know a person who is very close to me, my closest relative. And uh, their son is always like a trouble, pain in the neck, cross they bear. I can literally see that. Yet, oh, what a faith. Wonderful. And they are sick people too. They have a lot of sicknesses in their bodies and I know them. Wonderful people. And who am I before them? Nothing. This is how I entered into my ministerial birth. <laughs> I, I don't carry any pleasure. Because I read the Bible for 25 years and I'm someone and all that. I'm nothing before such people. They may not know the Bible as much as I know. They might not have the gift of teaching and preaching. But you know what? They are such an example and role model to me. 
I learn from them. And I appreciate them. I applaud. I, I have openly confessed to them, saying, I'm nothing before you. And they keep on listening to my sermons and all that. They appreciate, oh, this is what, uh, uh, this, this is the, the reason why God created you. You are a wonderful brother. You are a blessing. This, and I said, I, I would continue to say, I'm nothing before you. Forget about me, nothing before Christ. Anyway, that is the truth. But I'm nothing before you. What is that? It's not flattering lips. I'm, I'm telling the truth to them. Yeah. At some point of time, they were thinking, oh, I was just saying simply and all that. Then I was very serious. Once I met them and I told them, you were so nice before God and before men. What a patience. What a role model you are in your conduct, in your speech, in your faith, in your purity. This is the way how the mark of your ministry should be. Ministry means what? The deeds of your life should be. Yeah, In the midst of tribulation. And it, it applies to you also, my brother. You are in tribulation at workplace, harassing boss. Every day he yells at you, throws paper right on your face while 10 people are looking at you. And then you end up collecting all those 10, 15 papers which are scattered. Nobody helps and everybody laughs at you. You are the joker. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm telling you, a day is coming. The same Potiphar who sent Joseph to jail. Once a time came where Potiphar comes down, bowing down before him and uh, kissing his signet ring and saying, you, can you imagine that situation on the day when Joseph <laughs> became the second most powerful man on Egypt? Egypt is like US today. Superpowers. Superpowers. And all, by all means. Yeah. Richest country and wealthy and, and very, very strong in army and this and that. And he became second powerful man. Can you imagine Potiphar coming right in front of him along with his wife, the deceiver? Uh, knees knocking against each other, you know, and they, they're coming in trembling. Joseph did nothing about it. Otherwise, it would have got registered in the Bible. And the book of Jasher also, I was looking for little evidence and I couldn't find anything. Right? And that, why? Because he's the man of God. He appreciates God. What? For permitting tribulations once upon a time. And he also tells the same thing to his brothers. Hey, don't, don't feel so bad. Why? Because God allows it. God permits Right? And you are the instruments to fulfill the tribulation in my life. And God converts the tribulation to success. God turns that failures to victory. Ah, and God permits. And God eliminates. When God permits, no, he's faithful to eliminate those days of tribulation from your life. I can give you references from Bible. 2 Corinthians 4, 17, 18. Yeah? These afflictions are only for a mere moment. These are temporary. But the days are coming where you will see that resolution is going to take place permanently in your life so do not worry do not be afraid when you face troubles in this world and this world is anyway full of troubles jesus said that in john 14 127 and he also said that my peace i leave it with you your peace no one can snatch it the devil cannot snatch your peace and joy in the midst of your tribulations and you know what you will be continuing to stay in calmness and you, will continue, and you will continue to appreciate God. Now I'm talking from two perspectives, uh, two different perspectives. Appreciating men in the midst of all the things that are working against you. And, and at the same time, you appreciate God who permits. And 1 Corinthians 10, 13, I anyway spoke about that, right? Uh, in one of the short sessions I spoke, right? God doesn't allow any temptation beyond what you could bear. Any trouble, any sickness, any problem, any troublemaker, beyond what you could bear, beyond what you could handle, beyond your capabilities, beyond your wisdom, what he has instilled in you, beyond your skills. So don't worry. And he makes a way for you to escape in the midst of that interval. That is a period, right? And that's exactly what we are discussing. In an acceptable time, he hears your petition and he answers in the day of the salvation, he heard you, Bible says. All these things, right? He's faithful God. Don't worry. He's known for faithfulness. You don't have to teach him faithfulness. <laughs> yeah, he's full of faithfulness. So don't worry. Don't worry. In tribulations. And in needs. In needs. You have materialistic needs. Not able to clear the credit card bill, sir. First of all, stop using credit card. Don't buy anything in credit. Right? You have money spent. You don't have money, don't spend. Don't go on credit. I will get my salary. Let me see. What? How do you know? Some tax rules have changed and suddenly you will see 50% salary gone. Anything can happen. Right? When you have money you spend, brother, plan it out. Right? It's such a bad habit to go on credit. Not able to clear the monthly rent. Huh? Give, uh, giving an account to your owner, I will give next month. Eh? 
please don't you feel shameful to even i okay once in a while it happens fine situations were bad against you you lost your job fine once in a while it's okay but i'll tell you what i'm a tremendous believer those who shall stay in the lord those who shall accept the lord of lords and king of kings jesus as their refuge and fortress bible says whoever believes in the lord they will never be put to shame romans 10:11 psalms 34:5 those who shall look into his face their face will be like radiance and shame will not cover them i cannot believe that scenario where that brother or sister will go and beg for mercy to their landlords or owners and something like that yeah i will what up six months i need leniency you know how many people i've seen and they'll say it's mere grace brother that my landlord was merciful in cancelling the debt and all that shame on you your landlord is an unbeliever that too. what he will think of you going and portraying yourself as a beggar in christ you are a believer in christ believers in christ can never be a debtor ah huh? why second corinthians 9889 there is abundance in every good work that you do he is sovereign god he is not running short of money or resources now my god is not bankrupt that he cannot instill that sovereign and that prosperity in your life right in needs fine these are materialistic perspectives and the are these are these the deeds of your life through your needs you are exposing yourself as a beggar debtor sorry you are not a christian ask for forgiveness for your attitude first of all change your attitude believe that you can overcome your debts and god is going to miraculous you know help you in a miraculous way and uh, the little that I, that you get also god knows how to multiply it but brother a good example i'll tell you what many people who Uh, you know receive the paycheck in lakhs they will end up spending lot of money in their medical bills lot of sicknesses or maybe there is a spendthrift wife or maybe there is a mischievous child gone you know they get the paycheck on first and third or fourth in the on the beginning of the month they are bankrupt but you have such a loving family understanding wife praying children children can pray for their parents listening to me right and uh, god has kept you very very healthy you don't have to spend a single rupee on your medical expenses and what is that called as multiplication brother your money is sustained in your bank and what happens is over a period of time god will watch how are you reacting and all of a sudden your boss comes and knocks your desk and say hey you're promoted oh really boss and then he says no not a single promotion double promotion take it <laughs> you believe it or not it happened once in my life too and i stopped asking god for promotions after that because why he knows when to give what to give uh, but i believe in the basics the principles right uh, the deeds of for, uh, of my life in the midst of my needs are going to are not going to portray me as a beggar or a pauper or a uh, you know something like that i don't believe that but there are spiritual needs also through which yeah the mark of your life is going to be revealed as a warrior or are you that person who always keeps shaking the throne of god and um for years together and all that um not i mean if there are one or two petitions that doesn't get answered it's a quite a thing but then all the petitions never get answered which means what god is not on your side there is something wrong god wants you to change my father requires a change in you and in the midst of your spiritual needs you will continue to appreciate god right that is what we don't have in our system spiritual system and that is where i i i myself struggled i am not able to appreciate god in all situations in all circumstances i sometimes end up fighting not now in the early age of my you know christian walk with god spiritual walk with god i used to argue with him a lot why are you permitting this how can you do this then i read from romans chapter 9 uh, you know uh, you you cannot question romans 920 why who are you to reply against god yeah, that verse is really registered in my heart yeah who how can you question god that's what it means and i stopped questioning and i started to up, start to appreciate god yes father you have permitted you are watching yes per, yes father you have delayed but it's not denial Yes father you know my pain you can feel pretty much when the midst of my sickness but give me the grace yeah to bear give me the strength to bear make a way for me to escape as it is written in your word and uh, bring the change whatever you are expecting in me uh, in the midst of my needs am i able to say this then yes you are on the right side of the gospel and lastly 
uh, my time is up actually we will continue from where we have left in the, in the midst of distresses there are may, various things you know we uh, keep ignoring these things and that's where we get caught in the trap in the midst of distresses in a distressing situation pressurizing moment and you will feel that kind of you know pressure in your heart and mind uh, worried about something either of the past or of the present or of the future um, none of these are useful right do not worry about tomorrow bible clearly gives us a doctrine and what makes you to get into that distress always a long face camel face right and that to sitting in the middle of uh, the hall and everybody you, that too you will ensure everybody notices you that is another bad habit you are so depressed with long face go to your room sit privately but when you come out be be cherishing an attitude yeah sometimes you have to learn that from jesus you think he was man of sorrow bible says man of tremendous man of tremendous sorrow i say 53 5 i you you definitely have to read that you will understand wherever he went he was never having any joy in his heart because he see that he is seeing that you know people are without that shepherd uh, people are not even understanding the gospel whenever he preaches people are st- about to stone him to death and especially his own co-workers like pharisees you know wonderful uh, preachers and teachers but they themselves have not understood jesus he was really sorrowful in his heart and he was always in distress but wherever he goes and preaches he preaches with his fullest effort full of energy yeah and then he separates himself in loneliness and probably i would say he was sobbing before god yeah in in loneliness all night he used to spend time in prayer what do you think my jesus would be doing yeah you sometimes don't have to expose your distress to to your own family members but expose it to your father are you that man are you that sister yes then yes you are having the right mark of the ministry right deeds of your life is ma- being manifested I appreciate right and this is exactly what you and I need to learn today and we are done with verse number 4 uh, i hope you are definitely um, learning something right what must be the marks of the ministry what must be the mark of the christian what must be the deeds of a christian that proceeds out of his life and mouth yeah and and and, and especially life whatever you do your doings your manifestations god bless you heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity that you have enabled in our life to learn from the word of god what we are learning is very important father if we don't fall by these principles we know we will receive no forgiveness on the day but this is the time where we could change your attitude and receive your forgiveness maybe we have not fallen by this sorry we had not practiced these principles these principles in our life or applied these doctrines to our life instructions to our life but you are ready to forgive us Thank you father in Jesus name we pray amen god bless you subscribe to our channel get access to all our playlist and uh, um, you know share it with your friends relatives near ones dear ones and uh, continue to stay tuned we will uh, release more videos and when you subscribe you'll get automatic notification continue to remember me and our ministries in your prayer god bless